I know you intend to deceive me and leave me in a tortured and desperate state, so I would prefer not to engage with you. At twenty feet tall, Madame Stana was just below average height, and her robes were well-made and stylish, but not too ostentatious. The wide, high-backed chair in which she sat was reminiscent of a throne, but was not a throne. A decorative architectural ramp of polished white marble that extended across the entire width of the room and gave the appearance that she sat before a rising moon just cresting at her shoulders. Several sculptures of various sizes, from human to giant, murals and mirrors decorated the space. She did not have the trappings of royalty, but she carried an air of confidence that implied that she wielded all the influence she needed. She crossed her legs, leaned back, and swirled a goblet in the air just above her shoulder. A human man quickly wheeled an ornate metal cart up the ramp to her side and poured several bottles of wine into it as she spoke. But I have it on good authority that you are effective in providing your services. The elderly human woman before her stared brazenly up into her eyes. She wore clean, pressed robes of dark blue. Her hands were joined before her, almost as if in prayer, but were hidden by the wide sleeves. Her hair was midnight black, unnaturally dark when compared to the deep creases that etched her face. She spoke slowly. What do you want? And what will you give? The host sipped from her chalice. I want to best my rival at the next festival of chance. He has been crowned the king of chance the last eight consecutive times. I know he cheats, but it is not against the rules if no one can prove it. She absent-mindedly examined her glass as her guest studied her. You want to cheat to reveal his cheating. What is the game? There will be a large box roped off and placed in the center of King Gregory's gaming hall. All who wish to play must submit a wager and will be given one clue as to its contents. Players cannot cross the ropes or touch the box but can use their senses and wits to determine their answers. Each of the three days of the festival, the players will meet to observe the box and increase their bets. Everyone is invited to watch the players make their final antes, taunt each other, and submit their final guesses. The competitor who correctly guesses the contents of the box wins the box contents, the jackpot, and the grand prize. This year, the trophy is a ceremonial hammer with some special history I don't care about. She waved her empty hand dismissively, then covered her mouth to stifle a yawn. Uh, I hear it looks nice. Most importantly, the winner has the privilege of lording their talent, drive, and superior deductive skills over everyone else. I need to know the contents of that box. And who is your rival? The giant gulped down the contents of her glass and waved it again. The middle-aged man again began tipping several bottles of wine into it. She looked up at the high ceiling, adorned with friezes of mountain tops piercing into clouds, and sighed. <sighs> King Gregor himself. I helped him to get where he is, but he has become arrogant and forgetful of his friends. The elderly woman's gaze darkened, her steely blue-gray eyes meeting and piercing into the giant's bright silvery ones. What will you give? Lady Stanza smiled shrewdly. I know that is a risky question, but I also know what you want. You 
enjoy the misery and regret of others. Without waiting for the glass to fill completely, she began to move the almost full glass to her lips. The man pulled the last bottle back suddenly to avoid spilling any of its contents. He breathed a silent, deep breath of relief and turned toward the cart. This one, she said, tipping her glass toward him without a glance in his direction. Her careless movement caused the wine to slosh violently in her glass, almost escaping it. After checking to make sure there had been no spills, the man began to organize his cart, focusing only on finding a place to secure the partial bottle of wine he still held, seeming to disregard the conversation about him. I won him during a side bet at the last festival, along with a huge stock of human wine that the loser received in tribute. He seems incapable of learning giant, and I refuse to speak common in my own home. His sole purpose in life is to bring me drink when I am in this room. I forget about him when I am not here, sitting in this very chair. Suddenly, a sharp crash came from behind her, and for the first time, she turned to look at him. The man stood trembling as he stared down at the bottle that had apparently slipped from his hand. Deep red fluid slowly wended down the curved slope, becoming a single rivulet like blood trickling from the puncture wound of a fresh kill. It was a glaring, vibrant contrast to the bright white marble. She rolled her eyes. Well, that has never happened before. It seems he has become a... 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 What is the word? She seemed forgetful, even scatterbrained. Not the assured and poised host she had been at the start of a conversation. Li liability. A liability to my peace of mind. So I will be glad to be rid of him. As he knelt to clean the spill before it left a stain, his eyes were wide and his movements were frantic, but he did not speak. The giant pointed directly at the old woman with her free hand and spoke in a commanding tone. Tell me the contents of the box, witch, and he is yours to do it as you wish. If I am pleased with your service, I might include you in the plan to overthrow that dullard Gregor. She laughed out loud, a harsh and snorting laugh. <laughs> he would never expect an insignificant blot like you to aid in besting him. The old woman looked at the agitated, kneeling figure who had been furiously trying to clean and polish the dark stream that marred the angled marble floor. He paused briefly, as if someone had patted him on the shoulder. He stiffened, but he kept his eyes on his task. Do we have a bargain, crone? The old woman smiled up at the giant. The creases of her face appeared deeper, and the teeth in her smile seemed abnormally sharp. The bargain was made quite a while ago, my dear. Shadows began to spill around her like mist, condensing around a chilled glass of water in high summer. A shimmer appeared behind her. As it grew, Madame Stanza arose from her seat, hand outstretched as if to thwart whatever attack might be happening, but... As soon as she stood, she fell back exhaustedly, very nearly in a stupor, into that almost regal chair. Have you heard enough, your highness? Her voice now cracking and hissing. Behind her, the shimmer extended and opened. Through it stepped a wizened woman with pale green skin, a tall, husky woman, sparsely clothed in seaweed and shells, and a blue-skinned male giant with silver hair and eyes. He wore fine, regal blue robes threaded with pure gold and an unassuming platinum circlet on his brow. Unfortunately, yes, said King Gregor. I wanted you to find anyone planning to cheat at the Festival of Chance, but I did not expect you to find a traitor to the kingdom. He paid no attention to anyone else in the room as he strode toward the incapacitated figure who lolled before him in her sumptuous chair. He frowned as he briefly placed a hand on her cheek.
She twitched and gurgled, evidently unable to move or speak. If you have done any permanent damage to her, the deal is dissolved. Your magic and your sisters will not be able to save you from my retribution. The effect is temporary, just a safeguard until a business is concluded. As agreed, you will have one quarter of the liquid wealth of any cheater you find. He frowned deeply, his wispy, silvered eyebrows knitted and shimmered in the light, reflected by the polished marble and metal that adorned the chamber. The shame of being exposed as a cheater and the financial penalty would have been enough, but a traitor and a plot. I have distasteful work ahead of me. Sire, crooned the old woman, I have performed a more valuable service than previously agreed. I believe our terms should be renegotiated in exchange for exposing this danger to your rule. I only ask to help you in uncovering it fully. I know an appropriate prison in which to keep her and extract information. If she does not cooperate, there will be harm, but she will not perish unless you command it. He stared into the eyes of the helpless turncoat and, after a long pause, he responded, So be it. The old woman suddenly appeared on the ramp next to the hapless giant's head and whispered something into her ear. Her eyes widened in confusion and tears welled in them. The human man, who had still been polishing the marble flooring, suddenly stopped. He shook his head as if just realizing where he was and what he was doing. He looked up at the old woman for the first time. What did you say to her? asked the king. I made a bargain with her for this man. I told her what would be in the box at the festival of chance. She will not be able to use the information. King Gregor frowned. I do not even know what will be in the box. I wager fairly. Yes, you do, she growled, sounding almost disappointed. Tanti? The voice sounded like a croak from lack of use. The man began to rise from his knees. He dropped the cloths he had been cleaning with and looked around as if rousing from a daydream. Am, am I done here? She glanced back at him. Yes, child, you did a very good job. Just like always. As King Gregor hefted the traitor into his arms, the two other women walked silently back into the portal. Stanza's head fell over his shoulder as he walked forward to follow them, and her eyes caught those of the old woman and the middle-aged man. He stuck his tongue at her and said, in perfectly accented giant, You drink too much, and you're mean. And who the hell is that? Gregor said, glancing over his shoulder. He has no name, sire. He is the result of a broken bargain. She reached up and patted him gently on the head. And he has become a very good helper. <laughs>